Hey, hello students, my name is Sanjay Peter and I am the high school science faculty of Diamond Gospel Institutions, Bench, Malaki. So due to the pandemic, that is uh, a very dangerous spreading in all over the world. So that is uh, we are starting the online classes for class 8, 9 and 10. So now we are discussing about the science classes of class 9 standard. So, so this is the first chapter of the syllabus known as matter in our surrounding. So right. So now we already know what is a matter. Right. What is a matter? Simple. Matter is anything that occupies the space and that has the mass. Simple, I will take the example of this duster. So I will call this duster as the matter because it occupies space. When you need to keep somewhere, it occupies the space. And even it has the mass also. So due to this one, so we say that it is the matter. So we will discuss about the introduction of the matter by the ancient philosopher and even by the modern day scientists. How our ancient philosophers and the modern day scientists how they classify matter in the different things. So according to our ancient philosophers, so right, whether the things are living or non-living. Whether the things are living or non-living, because our earth has the both living and non-living atoms, right? Whether the things are living or non-living, according to the ancient philosopher, they said that they all are made up of the panchatattvas, right? Listen carefully. Whether the things are living or non-living, according to the ancient Indian philosophers, ancient Indian philosophers, according to them, whether the things are living or non-living, they all are made up of pancha tattvas. Pancha means five. There are five tattvas are there. They all are made up of these tattvas only, which are there. Air, earth, fire, sky and the water. So that is the ancient day classification of the matter. So, but what is the modern day scientist classification about the matters? How our modern day scientist has classified the matters? So, our modern day scientist classified the matters into the two types known as based on the physical properties and the chemical properties. The classification of the matter by the modern day includes based on the physical properties of the matter and the chemical properties of the matter. So, on the basis of the physical properties of the matter, the matter is classified into the three types. You already know that one. They are known as solid, liquid and gases. So, these classification were based on the physical property. Then what is the difference between physical property and the chemical property? The physical property in the word, it is the outside. Outside uh, appearance of an element. But what is the chemical properties? It is nothing but the combination of the matters. So, on the physical properties of the matter, there are three types are there, solid, liquid and gas. But on the chemical properties of the matter, again there are three types are there, elements, compounds and mixtures. So, we are not going to read about these all things, so we are going to study about the physical properties of the matter, nothing but solids, liquid and gases. So now understand by the definition what is a matter and what are the physical properties of the matter. So now what is a matter? Right. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. What is a matter? Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. So right, I will call this board as the matter. This and as the mark of matter. So means anything. So anything, whatever it may be, so if that has a mass and that occupies a space, that is called as the matter. Right. Then what are the properties of this matter? So this matter, the matter, they are made up of very small tiny particles. Very small tiny particles, they are called as the atoms. So means each matter is made up of the small individual tiny particles, they are known as the atoms. Then how these atoms are there? 
can you see the atoms no it is not possible why it is not possible to see the atoms because these particles of matter are too small so they are that much small we cannot see we cannot see with the naked eyes so means with our eyes we cannot see the particles of matter which they are made up of or even by the simple microscope they are not visible by the naked eyes and by the simple microscope then this is the third property these particles of matter they are continuously moving right as the process of kinetic energy what is kinetic energy the energy by virtue of its motion so if any energy is in its motion that is known as the kinetic energy then this kinetic energy is possessed by the particles of the matter and as a result they are continuously moving so right so how to know that whether the particles of matter are continuously moving just take an example you may be seen the incense sticks right so the incense stick you just burn and keep the incense stick in one of the corner of your house but as a result you can see that even the smell comes to you even if for very far away from that one so why it is possible because the particles of matter they are continuously moving so there is the reason what are the properties of the matter there are the three properties of the matter are there first property is the matter is made up of the small tiny particles they are known as the atoms and these particles of the matter they are too small that much small they are even we cannot see with our naked eyes can you see that by which particle of the matter it the this pen is made up of we cannot see i cannot see the particles of this matter because they are very small they are too small we cannot see with our naked eyes and even by the simple microscope you cannot see them and these particles of the matter they are continuously moving right they are continuously moving whether as a result if any energy is in motion that energy is known as the kinetic energy that the reason they possess the kinetic energy so now what is meant by the brownian moment right or even it is also known as brownian motion also what is brownian moment and what is a brownian motion both are same so what is the brownian moment right it is the zigzag or a random movement of the particles of matter so zigzag at the matter whatever will be how they are moving we don't know the path is not fixed it is a zigzag movement so the zigzag movement or the random movement of the particles of the matter is known as the brownian movement if i take this is the particle of a matter if it is moving zigzagging in any direction so this is called as the brownian movement so now next is the diffusion understood what is the brownian movement it is a zigzag or nothing but random direction if they are moving the particles of the matter that is known as the brownian movement then what is the diffusion the diffusion is the thing but it is the intermixing of particles of two different types of matter on their own means any external agency should not be involved there to mix the particles of the matter if any two different particles of the matter they are intermixing with each other by their own that is known as the diffusion right how take an example to understand what is the diffusion just take a glass of water mix it with the a sugar right so after you can see that both types of the matter they are intermixing with each other and this intermixing of the matter even become faster by increasing temperature so means the diffusion the rate of diffusion a rate whenever the rate word comes in a science it doesn't mean the cost or the price the rate implies in a science as the speed right keep in mind so the rate of diffusion the rate of diffusion increases the rate of diffusion increases with with increase in temperature means the intermixing of the two 
different type of the matter that become faster when the temperature rises so means say to take the example take a, a cup of water mix it with the sugar and keep it separately right take again a bowl of water and mix it with the sugar but just you keep it on the gas flame you can observe that the mixability of the flame sugar and water that mixes quickly compared to the glass which is kept separately so it indicates that the temperature influences the intermixing of the particles means as the temperature rises or as the temperature increases what happens the diffusion becomes faster that reason the rate of diffusion increases with the increase in the temperature so what we discussed what is the matter right what are the properties of the matter and what is the brownian moment and what is the diffusion means so now we we'll discuss about the characteristics of particles of matter very important the characteristics of particles of matter what we studied that was the just an introduction part of the syllabus so now we go to move towards the main portion of the syllabus that is the characteristics of particles of the matter then what are the characteristics of the particles of the matter the first characteristic is the particles of matter they are continuously moving right means the particles of matter they are continuously moving and the second is they have a space between them means even the particles of matter have the space between them and the third characteristic is they attract each other means there is attractive force is there between two particles of the matter so these are the three characteristics of the particles of the matter are there, very important so now we will study one by one about the three properties of the matter so now students will discuss one by one characteristics of the particles of the matter which is the first characteristics of the particle of the matter the particles of the matter continuously moving they are continuously moving right so now how they are continuously moving the question is how they are continuously moving as i said in before only the particle of the matter they possess the kinetic energy right what is the kinetic energy the energy in motion potential means the energy in position so right if as the particles of the matter they possess kinetic energy right what happens as the temperature rises the particles faster they move faster because the kinetic energy increases simple you can understand why the particles of the matter they are continuously moving simple why in a simple way you can answer that because they possess the kinetic energy right why the particles of the matter they are continuously moving because they possess the kinetic energy so but what is the condition here i get the condition is there so what is the condition means as the temperature rises when the temperature rises as a result what happens means this moment of particles of the matter i get the faster so means there is a rise in temperature means there is the moment of particle is also more means as a result the particles of the matter starts to move faster when there is a rise in the temperature you can understand by a simple example take a glass of water take a glass of water to understand the particles of the matter are continuously moving right and add add the two three drops of the two three drops of ink so just add two three drops of ink in the water so when you are going to add the ink in the water what happens means just do one thing here so do not shake this glass just uh, make the water level as the calm right in a steady place in a steady place so right so in that position you just add the two three drops of the ink in the water so what happens means this ink is starts to move in throughout the water
so after some times the ink will mix with each particles of the water then how it's possible why it is possible because the particles of water the particles of water what they possess they possess kinetic energy right the particles of water they possess kinetic energy as a result the ink starts to flow all the corners of the glasses and as a result the whole glass of water will convert into the color of the ink so this example showed us that what it shows this showed us that the particles of matter that continuously moving then how the moment is there in solid liquid and gas right so the moment of particles of matter particles of matter it is minimum in solid right if the matter is the solid then the moment is minimum more in the liquids means the moment of the particles more in the liquids because liquid move faster the solid cannot move faster so there are the conditions are there because the solids have the boundaries fixed boundaries but the liquid do not have the boundaries so as a result the liquid moves faster i am mixing in the gases so right so means the moment of particles of the matter minimum in solid very less more in liquids and maximum in the gases so that is the first characteristics of the matter that is particles of matter continuously moving simple if it is asked in examination how to write particles of matter continuously moving simple the particles of the matter they possess kinetic energy right so when they possess kinetic energy what happens even it depends upon or there is a rise in the moment of the particle of the matter with the rise of the temperature so right so you can write it by this is the first characteristics of particles of the matter we will discuss now the second so now we will discuss the second characteristics of the particles of matter that is the particles of the matter have space between them you already studied in the eighth chapter that each the three types of the matter they have the space right that so if you take solid liquid and gas so you can just write the particles of the matter of the solid the particles of matter of solid they are very tightly bonded as a result the space between them is very small right means the space between the solid is very minimum they have the very minimum space but what about the liquid in the liquid the space between the particles of matter that is more in the gas in the gas it is maximum right so means minimum in the solid more in the liquid and maximum in the gas so due to this space so due to this space it is not having the definite shape so means why the solid have the definite shape it's only because of the solid molecules they are tightly bonded when you want to break this one it is not that much easy because the particles of matter of this solid they are tightly bonded right so as a result it is not that much easy to break the solid as compared to the liquid and the gases right so the liquid and gases they do not have the definite shape it's only because of their molecules they are free they are not tightly bonded they are free and even they contain the space also the, that's only the particles of matter have space between them to understand this you know that how the particles of matter they have the space right to understand this just take an activity as an example so right take a cup of water take a cup of water 
So now mark the water level. How much water we inserted? Mark that. The level of the water. So right. So it is the water. So now add two spoons of salt or sugar. Salt or sugar. So after adding the sugar, again note down what is the mark. Where is the mark? Whether the level of the water is raised or not, you just check. So you do this experiment. So check it. But here what happens is the level of the water will not increase. Then the question is where that two spoons of salt or sugar go? Simple. Where it has gone? If you are adding it, the spoon of salt or sugar in the water, the water level must be increased. But why it is not increasing? That is simple is because the particles of the liquid have the space. What amount of salt or sugar you added into the liquid, what happens? Understand by this figure. So if you are adding the sugar or salt in the liquid, what happens? They have the space between them with the liquids. So the salt and sugar will be or they are filling in the gaps of the particles of the liquids. So as a result, what happens? The level of the water will not increases because they are filling the gaps of the liquids. So as a result, we can understand by this experiment or by this activity that the particles of the matter have the space between them. If the particles of the matter do not have the space between them, the water level should be rise. But what happens if you are adding the stones in the water, the water level increases because why it will increase when you add the stones in the water, but why it is not increasing when you add the sugar or salt in the water? Both are solid or not? Stone is also solid, and even the salt and sugar is also solid. But the case is here: sugar and salt they will intermix with each other. Means the salt with the water they intermix with each other. After stirring the water, you cannot find any sugar. Why you cannot find any sugar? Because that sugar is deposited in the gap of the particles of the liquid matter. So there is nothing but the particles of the matter have space between them. Then what is the movement of particles of matter in solid, liquid and gas? Minimum in solid. Why minimum in solid? Because the gap is very less. That is the reason. Minimum in solid. More in liquids. Because the gap or the space is more there. Maximum in liquid because the gap is maximum in the gaseous state. So right. So this is the second characteristics of the particles of the matter. They have the space between them. Now we'll discuss the third. So now we we'll discuss the third characteristics of the particles of the matter. That is the particles of the matter attract each other. So right. So to understand the particles of matter attract each other, so let us conduct one activity. Right. So one more time, understand how the particles of matter are there in solid, liquid, and gases. So these are the solids. Right. These are the liquids, and this is the gas. Just understand how the particles of matter are there in solid liquid and gas. So to understand this third characteristics of matter, particles of matter, just conduct one activity. Right. So just So just see it is a water coming from the tap, right? 
so now what happens when the water is coming there you just put your finger there in the middle of this tap right so now what happens means don't keep on its neck or the mouth so just keep just little middle below so what happens means when you keep the finger here so the portions of the water they are going to divide into the two portions the water is going to divide into the two portions so right where you kept the finger so on that side there is a division of the water you will be there so when your finger will end when your finger will end again they will flow in the same direction so what does it shows it shows that when you keep kept the finger the particles they are going to divide but where the finger is ending again they are attracting each other it indicates that the particles of water molecule they are attracting each other so we can understand by this experiment or this activity that is the particle of matter attracting each other then what is the force of attraction in solid liquid and gas simple whenever the particles are closer the force will be more just like two magnets when you keep the magnets closer the attraction will be more when you keep the magnet away attraction becomes less in the same manner the solid have maximum force of attraction because they are tightly bonded they are very close as a result their force of attraction is very much stronger you can understand this one by one of the simple game also right so that game in that game you are going to hold the hands right so when you are going to hold the hands it is not that much easily breakable because they are very closely bonded so any particle of the matter if they are closer means the force of attraction will be more intermediate liquids intermediate liquid nothing but it is not maximum it is not minimum it is middle so that is called as intermediate means in liquid the force of attraction is not much and not least also so it will be in the middle negligible in gases why it is negligible in gases because the particles of matter in the gases they are very away from each other as a result the force of attraction is very negligible it is negligible means we can say that it is negligible that much a least amount of the force of attraction will be in the gases state so these are the three characteristics of particles of the matter are very important so we have discussed so dear students now we discuss about the states of matter you are already very familiar with the states of the matter right so solid liquid and gases how the solid liquid and gases are classified into three types based on the physical properties right based on the chemical properties the matter is classified into three types of that is different what we discussed before on right so now based on the physical properties of matter the matters are classified into three types known as solid liquid and gases so there is a one more state is there but there is not mentioned as the other is a plasma state so we're not going to discuss about that one so these are the three major types of the matter solid liquid and gases so you can understand the particles of matter in the solid the particles of matter in the liquid and the particles of matter in the gases the space is minimum more maximum right so now we will discuss one by one about the solid properties and liquid properties and the gases properties first we discuss about the solids what are solids solid nothing but they have the definite shape how solids are there solids have a definite shape right how to understand this one so just take this duster like here this duster has a definite shape mean the shape will not change here the shape remains same if it is a rectangle means the shape will be rectangle it will not become triangle it will not become pentagonal means 
the shape remains same in the solid cases second property they have the distinct boundaries what is by distinct distinct nothing but the fixed distinction nothing but the fixed means the boundaries of the solid they have the fix the boundaries will not change they are the rigid what is the rigid rigid nothing but hard and solid the hard and solid they are known as rigid you have know that all the solids are hard why they are hard is because of their rigidity so right so that the reason the solids are the rigid they are the hard they are incompressible incompressible means you know that the properties of the compressibility and incompressibility incompressible means we cannot compress we cannot compress the solids it is not possible if i am compressing means it will not change its shape they are incompressible means how much you may be press they are not going to stretch in their shape because of the tight package of the particles of the matter they are the space is very less we cannot compress them the compressibility is very 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 less they are incompressible in the solids means solids are incompressible the solids have the definite volume means the volume of the solid will not change the volume remains same thing so these all are the properties of the solid what are the properties of solid they have the definite shape they have the distinct boundaries distinct boundary nothing but they have the fixed boundaries and they are rigid rigid nothing but they are hard and solid and they are incompressible matlab the compressibility is not possible there and they have the definite volume the volume of the solid will not change there come to the liquids what are liquids you know see here in the figure how the liquids are there. the liquids particles of the matter they are the space between them they have the space between them as a result they do not have definite shape if you take the liquids the liquid do not have the definite shape why they do not have definite shape because the particles of the matter they are they have the space so then which shape does the liquid have which shape does the liquid have i will take just this example as this a bottle ink bottle the ink is liquid here right the ink is liquid when the liquid is added into this shape the bottle the liquid taken the shape of this bottle matlab in a simple way we can understand that the liquids do not have any shape they will take the shape of the container means they will take the shape of container they do not have any definite shapes all the liquids they do not have definite shapes second no definite boundaries liquid do not have definite boundaries why because if you are keeping the liquid it is a possible that the liquid may flow from one place to the another place so as a result we say that liquid do not have definite boundaries simple if you keep the duster on the table it will not move why it will not move because it do it has a definite boundaries but if you keep the liquid on the floor it is possible that the liquid may flow from one place to another place right so that is because of they do not have definite boundaries when they do not have definite boundaries there is a possible of flowing the liquid from one place to the another place and they are the fluidity the fluidity means they are the fluids they have the fluidity qualities in them and they can easily move from one place to the another place they have the loop compressible means we can compress the liquid for some extent for some extent we can compress but it is not maximum it is very less why it is less because the gap is not that much in the liquid also minimum more maximum the gap is there. they have the low 
compressibility and even they have the definite volume the volume will not change in case of the liquids also if a uh, definite volume is there means the volume will not going to change in case of the liquids also the volume remains same now come to the gases see the figure of the gas the molecules of particles of the gases so now as you know that the gap between the particles of gases they are very much means maximum as a result they do not have definite shape means even the gases do not have definite shapes they do not have definite boundaries even the bond is not there means the gases may flow from one place to the another place as a result they do not have definite boundaries even the gas also have the unity means they can easily flow from one place to the another place they are highly compressible highly compressible means they can be compressed very much uh, to understand this one take an example simple example you are going to use cng in the automobiles as a fuel the cng is used as the fuel in automobile right so it is a hybrid engine they are going to uh, give in the engines of this automobiles so what is the full form of the cng the cng full form is compressed natural gas what is that compressed natural gas means that gas is compressed in the cylinder compression means if the volume is there means the 1 liter of the milk is there it will be 1 liter only right it will not going to change but in a 1 liter of a can you can feel the 1 liter of the milk more you cannot feel because the compressibility is very less in the liquid and it is incompressible in the solids solids it is not possible so due to the high compressibility we can compress the gaps and instead of filling little we can fill a more amount of the gases in the same containers that the reason the gases can be compressed in a very high rate that is called as a high compressible means if you are blowing the balloon you can blow until it will not burst so means we can compress we can compress the gases if you take the same container you can fill more more amount of the gases so that is because of it is highly compressible how it is highly compressible due to the large space between the particles of the matter it is highly compressible so now they do not have definite volume the volume is not fixed in case of the gases so these are the three states of matter with their properties so we discussed about the solid liquid and gases properties in the next class we are going to discuss again more so just keep stay focused be home be safe we will be right back in the next class